Hey guys, this is Amber from NotableInk.com and I am back with inspiration for the Hedgehog Hollow July 2019 kit. We're thrilled that Sophia Caldwell is collaborating with us again with her beautiful florals and this time some butterflies. I'm going to be featuring the butterfly stamps today and we're going to use them in two different ways. I'll stamp them with Nouveau Black Shadow Hybrid ink and then also emboss them with two of the exclusive WOW and the Hedgehog Hollow collaboration embossing powders that are included in the kit. So I'm really excited to use those. On a side note, I just wanna mention, you'll notice that my right thumbnail is not painted and that is because it tore off, a, a good part of it tore off recently and it's really painful at the moment. I didn't wanna cover it with polish or anything else because it is painful. So hopefully that will be healed soon, but if you notice it, that's what the situation is. Um, so let's get started. Let's take a closer look at the Hedgehog Hollow July 2019 kit. Inside, you have a limited edition print from Sophia Caldwell, and on the back it lists all of the supplies in the box as well as a note from Alexandra from the Hedgehog Hollow. So for regular subscriber bonus this month, you get the WOW freestyle tool, so you can take this directly to your paper or directly to your stamp. And then for the first time, WOW has coordinated with the Hedgehog Hollow to create four exclusive embossing powders. This one is Copper Tone Shift. There's also a Plum Shift. So you can see the bottom there. So you've got Plum and different colors in there as well. This is a black and gold. This is a chunkier embossing powder. So I'm excited to use this one to see how it turns out. Um, I'm planning on using it on things that maybe have less of a fine detail, more kind of chunky lines. And this is everything glitter but rose. So you can see all of the glitter in there. And then it has some rose gold embossing powder as well. This is the oval sentiment stamp set. And all of these sentiments are the correct size to fit inside this floral um, foliage oval stamp that we have here. So you can see my husband fits in there as well as well as all of these other sentiments. So those are meant to coordinate together, which is fantastic. And that stamp is a great size. Then you have the butterflies here. So this is the oval butterfly stamp set. So three stamp sets included this time. And this is ampersand love stamp set. And the three florals that you see with the little bits of washi tape on them, those coordinate together to create a beautiful bouquet. So. Just gorgeous stamps in this set, and you can see the love at the bottom, which also has florals on it. Here we have six craft envelopes, and then you have six um, card fronts, and these are in various different cardstock colors, and then the black one on the top is a black vellum, which I've never seen before, so I was really excited to get that in the box. Um, I think that would look really cool with the black and gold embossing powder, so, I wish I, ha I might have to invest in more of that because I think it's really cool. And then you have these five different colors here of different card stocks. And then of course you also get six card bases of 110 pound Nina Classic Crest. This is a stamp that goes with the May box that was to replace one of the stamps in that kit. So you've got those there. So that is the total of the box as well as the piece of candy. Loaded in my Misty, I have a piece of Star Dream Metallic Quartz paper. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, and I've got that loaded in my Misty. I have the largest butterfly, and I'm gonna stamp two different cards, once in clear embossing ink and another in black hybrid ink from Nuvo. So I'll just show you a couple of the butterflies that I stamp. I'm not gonna show you all of them because I think that'll get too tedious throughout the video, and I wanted to keep it relatively short in terms of the video. So this is a shiny metallic paper and it's not completely absorbent. It's probably like semi-porous. And so the ink is gonna not look as black as it would on, let's say like your Nina, that's gonna absorb the ink and hold on to it really well. This is gonna more sit on the surface. So it's gonna have more of maybe a charcoal color. Um, I'm planning on using alcohol markers. Otherwise, I probably would have used a black pigment ink that would have, you know, that'll also sit on top of the paper. That would have showed up blacker. So I'm gonna start off here and I'm gonna use my Plum Shift embossing powder that's from the kit. Because I wanted you guys to be able to see a selection of the powders, I'm actually gonna use two of them on this card. 
I'll use the plum shift and the copper shift. So I've just sprinkled that on and you can see even though this is a really detailed stamp, it goes on really well. Now because this is a metallic paper, I'm going to use really short bursts. So as soon as the powder starts to melt, I take my heat tool away, let it cool just a bit and I'll bring it back. And I feel like that's really the key for your specialty papers, you know, whether you're doing it on like a foil paper or a vellum or things like that. Short burst, as soon as you see it melt, take the gun away, let it cool down, and then bring it back. And this is in real time so that you have an idea of how I do that. So there's less warping to the paper that way. So here's the copper tone shift. So we'll go ahead and sprinkle that on. And we'll do the same thing. Now this is a smaller butterfly, so of course it's gonna go a lot faster. And just flick off the, so again, even though that's a small detail butterfly, but it embossed really well with these embossing powders. So you can see the shine of the paper, and you can see that variegated color from the embossing powders. So I'm gonna use the happy birthday sentiment, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that now before stamping the rest of the butterflies. And then, so here's the rest of the butterflies. I wanted a couple of them to be off the paper. And then we're gonna go ahead and do some cop Copic coloring. Sorry that I did not film the largest butterfly, but I'll show you a couple of the small ones. I really did the same technique. So normally I will start with my darkest color. Here I did a base layer of the lightest color, which is bamboo. These are Alta New Artist markers. And I also came in with moss, which is the darkest color in the set, just to add some uh, shadows and then the teal is from the seashore set so I believe that's set D and the uh, tropical forest markers are from set E I'll have everything linked below um, and so I have a three color palette so I've got the green the teal and the purple and then I'm just alternating what parts of the butterflies that I put those colors on so that everything is coordinated but looks a little bit different you know they're in the same family but look a little different and here I'm gonna bring in my shadows. And so all of that dark hybrid ink that you see in the middle, I'm actually gonna use this darkest green marker and just emphasize that and make some dark shadows in there just to give it a little more oomph. Before the card is over, you're gonna see me come in with a Sakura Micro Perm pen and just add some black detail into the stamp lines again to just uh, enhance those. Cause I feel like it got a little bit washed out on this particular paper. So the alcohol markers perform very differently on a paper like this as opposed to your Nina. They blend differently, you need less ink, the ink stays wet a little bit longer so you've got more of an opportunity to blend. I do think I prefer putting down the darkest color first and then just blending it out a little bit with the lightest color. And I find I do less flicking and more kind of dotting technique with it. So give it a try and see what you think. I have a couple other videos um, where I've colored on this particular paper as well. Um, so here I didn't feel like the sentiment was dark enough and I had already taken the stamp out of my Misty. So I'm just outlining it again with that Sakura Micro Perm pen. This is an 03. You probably could even do this with an 05 because my pen is thinner than the stamp outline that we have there. So I have just a white graphite pencil here and I'm just marking the corners because I decided I wanted a border around this for the design. They kind of just looked like they were floating out there and I didn't really want to do a sky or anything like that. So I decided a border would be the way to go. But then I did it and I didn't really like it. So when in doubt, make another line. So just aura it and make another one. So I'm gonna do that here, and I still didn't like it. And I also, I didn't want a perfect line. So had I wanted that, I would have used a ruler, but I wanted it to be a little kind of fun and funky. So that's why I just did the corner dots and connected them. And I don't like it. Here I'm thinking about well, what I'm gonna do. So again, when in doubt, add some Zentangle. So um, I am a certified Zentangle teacher, so if you're interested in that, I have more videos on my site. I'll put a link down below to my blog, but um, this particular pattern is called Mooka, and it's particularly useful just to kind of fill in some space. So this is Mooka and also Poke Root, so the little berry-looking things are Poke Root. So 
I'm just going to add a little bit of detail to the corners, similar to what they would do, you know, if you're adding details to letters, um, things like that. And um, here I'm just adding some weight to those. So it always looks best when you have a higher amount of contrast. So adding just those little bits of black area, inky areas is going to make the patterns really pop and stand out. Same as with your coloring. So if you're coloring in just your light and medium tones and you don't put in your darkest colors, it doesn't really pop until you put in your shadows. You need that contrast to really get things to pop. Otherwise, everything just blends in together. So this is kind of the same idea. So again, I'm just adding some of that dark color and then I'm looking at it. It doesn't look super balanced. I'm gonna add some additional um, kind of circles. I'll just add some circles in here to fill in the white space. And then I decided it, it just didn't look right only having it in two corners. So because I had the butterfly in that lower right corner up above, since this is upside down, I just added it to the side and then I'm gonna add a few here. Now I think it looks best when things aren't exactly the same. I mean, it's really hard to draw things symmetrically anyway. But so I have different arrangements of these things and I was happier with the amount of balance that it added having it in more places than just the two corners. And here's the finish then tangle here. So once I was done with that, I here's again where I felt like it needed more contrast. So I'm just taking that same microperm pen and I'm just adding a little bit of outline to these butterflies. So I'm intensifying the antennae, the body, the outside of the wings. And then again, where I brought in that darkest green marker, I'm just adding some flicks of the pen to that to add a little more interest. Oh, you know what I should have done? I meant to do it and I didn't end up doing it, but the eyes on the big butterfly, those are the ones that you can really see. And I meant to go in there with a white gel pen and just brighten up the eyeballs. So that's something that you might want to do or add, add to that. So here you can see the difference between the butterfly with the ink and without, and so I'll continue and do the rest of those. So here is our completed um, embossed arrangement. So the exact same arrangement of butterflies, um, but this one is obviously in the embossing powders, except for the sentiment, I did that in the black ink. So here I just have a piece of masking paper that I cut to two and three quarter by four inches, and then I just have a dot stencil here and what I'm gonna do is just tape that to the back and we're gonna do some ink blending. So I, there's no green in this card and I do like my cards to coordinate when I'm doing two in one video because I'm weird like that. So I wanted to add some green. Once I got the Shabby Shutters Distress Oxide on, I went ahead before taking off the stencil and wiped it off of the embossing powder because I didn't wanna smear it outside of the stencil lines. So that's a good trick to use. And I went ahead and peeled it off, but I just wasn't sold on this color. What I ended up doing was taking the Altenew Moss Ink, which is the darkest color in the Tropical um, Forest Green set. And unfortunately, I peeled off my mask. But I went ahead and added the moss to uh, over top of the Dress Dress Oxide and totally forgot that my mask wasn't on there. So then I had to bring the stencil pattern into the middle. I just did it lighter in the middle. Um, I'm going to add just some, this is just a regular pencil. There's just, it's just one of the short pencils, like a golf pencil, um, but it's a regular graphite pencil like you would use every day. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the mucha because the butterflies are really dimensional. So if I were to leave those flat, it just looks totally out of place, but I didn't want to necessarily bring in a color. So I'm just going to add a little more graphite to the outside. And then I just have a tortillon, which is kind of like a paper stump. And I'm just blending out that graphite. I decided to do a little bit of the outside of the butterflies. And then as I'm doing this, I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Because if a butterfly were to cast a shadow, the shadow would be so far away from the butterfly. But people, this is not, this is not a realistic card anyway. So I don't even know why I was thinking that. <laughs> like, sometimes I get in my head a little bit. So I'm just blending it out further around the butterfly so it's not I mean, because again, it doesn't make sense that a butterfly would have a drop shadow. Come on, that's just silly. But anyway, I blended it out more. Um, and then you can see the two cards there. So two totally different looks. I added some alcohol marker accents to the large butterfly on the embossed panel because I felt like it needed a little something. 
So you'll have to let me know which one you prefer with the color or without. And here are the finished cards. I wish that you could see the amount of shimmer and the translucency of the alcohol marker on this particular shimmer paper. It is so incredibly beautiful in real life, but incredibly challenging to photograph well. So I took pictures inside, I took pictures outside. I finally went with the ones outside and I, they, I still didn't get the result that I really wanted to see. So trust me, they're beautiful. I hope that you enjoyed this project today and will give alcohol markers on shimmer paper a try. If you don't have this stamp set, it at, at the time that I did this voice recording, it still was available. So check the hedgehoghollow.com slash shop. I'll have links down below so that you can get your box. I really appreciate you stopping by today. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button and that bell button so that you can be notified as of new inspiration as it comes along. I will link a couple videos at the end for more inspiration. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, breathe, ink, inspire.